Hi, I'm Glenn White with Hero Safety. In today's tutorial, I'd like to talk about the flare and the auto rotation in the AS350 and the EC130 models of helicopters. Now, whenever we start talking about auto rotations, it's somewhat of an opinion based discussion. And the opinions that I use are based off of doing over 30 years of full down auto rotations and also a study done by the Australian Royal Defense Force back in 1998 on how to do a full down auto in an AS350 BA. During the study, they uh, had all kinds of pieces of equipment hooked up to the helicopter, sensors on the collective altitude and so forth. And for the most part, I agree with everything in the study. There's one little part that I have a um, issue with, but we'll talk about that in a second. And whenever we're talking about the flare in, the, in any helicopter, uh, we wanna talk about the speed at entry. Uh, the speed dramatically affects the amount of inertia you have at the bottom of the auto rotation. The study in Australia found that if you entered the flare at 50 knots as opposed to 65, you had 10% less collective at the bottom to utilize for your touchdown portion. For the most part, the rotorcraft flight manuals are somewhere between 65 and 70 knots for the entry speed for the flare. Now, the study in um, Australia said that if you get above 70 knots, the flare is a little bit difficult to manage because of the rapid rise in rotor RPM. Uh, this would only be the case if you would flare too much, but we'll talk about the flare amount in a second. So if you find yourself above 70 knots, as you're about to come into the flare, just flare a little bit higher. It's somewhat like putting the brakes on a little bit earlier as you're getting to an intersection because you're going a little bit faster. Now the next portion what we want to talk about is the flare amount. Most people flare too much and the reason for this uh, being I believe is that when we learn how to fly helicopters um, at the beginning of our career, when we first start learning how to fly, they're smaller helicopters. The flare height for those helicopters is quite low. Um, whereas in the AS350, the EC-130 models of helicopters, they are much higher. Now in the Rotorcraft flight manual, it says to either flare at 65 feet or 70 feet. The study in uh, Australia found that 100 feet is the perfect flare height for the AS350, which I agree with. If you flare down at 65 feet, you have quite a bit more ground run. And the reason for that being is that your flare, your braking time isn't as long. So obviously you haven't had time to slow down as much as if you flared at a higher altitude. So 100 feet is a really good altitude in order to uh, start your, your flare in. But back to the flare amount, if you flare a lot, it'll help you drive up the rotor RPM. But what will happen is if you keep that, since you don't have the proper induction of airflow through the rotor system, the helicopter will start falling. Now, because the helicopter is falling more rapidly, we're going to have to use more collective on the bottom, using up the collective we want to use for touchdown. So what you want to do is you want to flare just enough where you start getting like a floating type sensation while you continue to descend and your rotor RPM goes up. Now, to help your rotor RPM go up, it uh, helps to drop a little collective out to kind of drive that up to a higher rotor RPM. Somewhere between 400 and 410 works real well, I find, in the, uh, in the auto rotation. So the difference between flare and the touchdown attitude is very little. It's only about a degree or two. And how you can tell during your auto if you're flaring too much is right at the end you'll feel like a sinking feeling. If you flare the exact perfect amount, then you pretty much stay at that attitude all the way to the bottom when you start adding collective to cushion your landing. I hope that clears up any um, misunderstandings you have about the flare and the uh, AS350, and we'll see you at the next Eurosafety tutorial.